So as Joe mentioned, there are a number of service components and service delivery components in the school-wide enrichment model. And the one of them that are it's very extremely important to teachers and to parents and to students is curriculum compacting. Uh, I think comp the rationale for compacting, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, is beautifully illustrated in this cartoon. Uh, anytime a teacher introduces a lesson or a concept or a new idea, what you end up seeing, of course, is that some of the students know the content, some of the students can master the content in a fraction of the time, and some students need to learn the concept. And so con co curriculum compacting, um, which is a, a, a differentiation of instruction service, is one of the most research-based and proven strategies to be able to eliminate content for students that have already mastered it or can master it in uh, a fraction of the time. Um, my friend Robin Shader oftentimes talks about how challenging it is to parent bright children. Love this cartoon. Before I was married, I had three theories about raising children. Now I have three children and no theories. Um, the point about compacting that I want to make is that this is a service of SEM that parents absolutely love. And once you begin using curriculum compacting with your most advanced students, you will probably uh, win their approval and their support. It's a, it is a service that we absolutely need to provide if we are going to eliminate boredom and address underachievement in, in, in academically talented and high potential students. So compacting is a differentiation strategy. It's a differentiated instructional strategy, but it also deals with curricular issues because we are replacing some of the regular curriculum with more challenging, more interesting, and more engaging work. When we define differentiation, we match the content with the student's interests, ability, um, instructional styles, modes of learning through various instructional and curricular strategies and methods, and that's what we're doing. When you hear someone talk about differentiation, Compacting is almost always on the list. And you know, we, we talk about compacting tiered assignments using enrichment and acceleration, using grouping. In fact, compacting takes into account many of this, these different differentiation strategies. When we compact curriculum, we can automatically tier, tier assignments, give students different assignments who are at different levels of instruction. We can give them choice. We can provide enrichment, we can provide acceleration, we automatically do some group grouping because we're grouping students by who've already mastered content and those that have not. And we're also giving students opportunities for things like independent study, research opportunities, mentorships, competitions. So compacting uh, is one of the oldest and most research strategies for differentiation and it can incorporate many of the others. Um, usually the students that we're going to consider for curriculum compacting are those that fall into the category of these areas. Many of them finish tasks early and quickly. Many of them complete their assignments before other students do. Many of them begin to appear bored when you're con uh, introducing materials they've already mastered. Sometimes they'll bring in their own reading material. They'll create their own games, diversions. Sometimes they're the students who are inattentive, daydreaming, and even misbehaving in class because they're bored. The challenge is, of course, that as students get older and as students encounter more and more work that they can master without any effort, what ends up happening is that they think being smart is all about not having to work in school. And then later on, when they finally do encounter something that requires them to work very hard, they start to wonder if they really are bright. So compacting helps students learn effort and learn how to work, and again, the kinds of students that are eligible for compacting are the ones that already demonstrate high performance, that have, in, in any one or more areas, have high achievement scores, high aptitude scores, ask questions that tell you they're advanced, and sometimes are asked for other students for, for help, and even ask you uh, questions that lets you know they'd like to go a little further, and these, 
are the students for whom compacting can make the biggest difference. There are three major goals of compacting. First is we want to create a more challenging, engaging, and learning environment. We want to make sure we're clearly defining the objectives of the regular curriculum and guaranteeing proficiency. And then most importantly, we want to find students time for alternative learning activities based on both advanced content and their individual interests. And so the, the goals of compacting are, are fairly clear and the process is actually also fairly clear. There are, this is a compacting form and it has been used and adapted and adopted all over the world. And we welcome individuals that, that, that hope to make minor changes to make it easier for them to use. All of SEM is really um, focused on, on implementation in your own schools. And as Joe often says, there's many different roads to get to Rome. We just hope that people will use the idea even if they need to adapt the form and, and again, use it in a way that makes more sense to them. There are three major steps in compacting that we'll be explaining. Name it, what's the child's strength areas? Prove it, how can you document that a child has curriculum strengths in those areas? And change it, what can we give the student to do that he or she already doesn't know and might be interested in doing. And this is not just more work and busier work. Again, really important that it's different, that it's engaging, that it's more challenging. It isn't just more of the same. I think one of the, the reasons we wanna talk about uh, compacting so, so much more now is that the rationale for compacting is clearer probably now than ever before. We know that a lot of the needs of our highest ability and gifted students are not being met in the classroom. A lot of these students already know much of their content. We already know that for some students, we must adjust the pace of instruction. And we also know that any kind of differentiation, including compacting, guarantees educational accountability and more challenge for students. And sometimes for students that we don't automatically think of, when they see other students doing their work in a compacted portion, they would like to try it as well. And isn't that a nice thing to think about? So again, the rationale. What does compacting do? As I mentioned, it assesses what a student already know, it eliminates the content that's already known, and it gives time for us to do something either in an enriched way or an accelerated way that's different and more engaging, more interesting. While recognizing students' skills and knowledge and strength, sometimes students have advanced interests and when we compact curriculum, we can let them pursue self-selected topics. When we compact curriculum and instruction, change instruction, we can give students more independence and we can eliminate boredom in the classroom. And again, our research on compacting tells us for many gifted and talented students, we can eliminate really up to 30 to 80 percent of content that they've already mastered at the beginning of the school year. So it is uh, an important practice for high potential students. There are two kinds of compacting. One that's easier and that's basic skills in areas like math or areas like spelling that we already can show very quickly that students already know. Mastery can be documented. You either spell a word correctly or you don't. You write something well or you don't. There's another type of compacting, which is more content compacting. And this might be in areas such as social studies, science, literature. And, and students may not already know the content, but when given the opportunity, they can master it in a fraction of the time. And this is another form of compacting. And so we go back to where we started earlier. Curriculum compacting has three steps. Number one, what is the child's ac curricular academic strength areas? And what are, what, what are the group of students potentially? How can we document or prove it? How can we change it and have that student use the time to do something more engaging, more interesting, and again, to be able to challenge students to make school more meaningful and more interesting. And these are the steps. Um, 
Oftentimes, this is easily, more easily done if there's a cluster of high potential students, and so we like to, to pair compacting with cluster grouping, but you can do it even if you have only one or two students in your class that really in the beginning of the year show the need for compacting. So, so keep in mind this is a, a differentiation strategy that can be used by almost any classroom teacher because everyone has students in their class that, ha that know a little bit more, that have a little bit more background, or that can master content in a fraction of the time. Just a few hints about how to get going on compacting. We start, we find if you start small, and that is you target a small group of students initially, you start with one content area, you experiment with different types of pre-assessment, and you find a variety of alternatives for your column three, and whenever possible, basing it on students' interests, that that's, this is the easiest way to get started. And, and what we say to people is try it. Keep experimenting, keep reflecting on what works well. The compacting process will be around for a long time. As you develop as a classroom teacher and as you develop as a content area specialist, and as you become even more committed to making sure you're meeting the needs of all of your students, you will find ways that make it easier to do, exchange ideas with your colleagues, but over time, keep reflecting on what works well, share those ideas with your, co with your colleagues, and then you will find that this strategy for differentiation is, is used more easily, and, and, and you can help others as well, coaching others to do well with compacting. Thank you.